The QTune program has been written to provide an easy way to modify some internal properties of queues that are not otherwise exposed. Every local queue has its own file on disk, known as the queue file, and two associated memory buffers which are allocated when the queue is opened. You can see the queue files under the queue manager's directory structure. These queue files contain both message data and control information about the queue, essentially all of its external attributes like trigger controls or default priority, along with some private attributes used only by the queue manager. The memory buffers are used as caches to hold data for recent messages. One of these buffers holds information about persistent messages, including message data, and the other buffer is for non-persistent messages. The size of these buffers is essentially hard-coded in MQ, and there's no simple mechanism for changing them provided in the product. Maybe one day there will, but unless and until that happens, we have to deal with the product as it is. Also, the file system which underlies the MQ storage will have its own caching, which reduces actual I.O. The I.O. for the Q files has got nothing to do with the logging that's needed for persistent recovery. The buffers talked about here are not used for that. So why would you want to change these buffers? Changing the buffer sizes can improve performance, because when the caches fill, MQ needs to write data to the Q file, whether these are persistent or non-persistent messages. For many applications and environments, the default cache sizes are fine. Messages are being removed from the queue at the same rate as they are being put. Or if there's no current consumer of the messages, e.g. the channel that removes messages from the transmission queue is down, then no cache size is really going to be adequate, but the performance hit is an acceptable trade-off. But sometimes it can be helpful to be able to modify these default buffer sizes. If you have a queue that processes larger non-persistent messages, for example greater than 100 kilobytes, then bumping the default settings has improved performance for some customers. There is some information in Support Pack MP01 that guides you through one way to do this. It essentially involves editing an any file, restarting the queue manager, defining or redefining a queue, re-editing the any file back to its original state, and then again restarting the queue manager. Apart from the restarts, this can be a tricky process and it is difficult to know if the changes you have made have actually taken effect. And for one queue in particular, the system cluster transmit queue, it can be very difficult, if not impossible, to change the buffers using the MP01 approach, as you cannot delete an in-use queue. QTune has been written to provide a more direct means to change these two buffers, and to look at the current size of them. It can also modify the maximum permitted queue file size, something no other tool or technique gives you. QTune can run on any of the distributed platforms, it's a Java program, so you must have a JRE installed, and that must be at least version 6 and it can modify the attributes for queues on all current versions of MQ from version 6 onwards. There's no need to delete and recreate the queues. The changes are applied by directly zapping the control information held in the existing queue files. With QTune, we can inspect the current settings of the buffers and the maximum queue file size. We can ask for the information based on either the name of the directory containing the queue file or using the queue and queue manager name. In the latter case, QTune runs the dispmq fools command under the covers to extract the directory name. When using the queue and queue manager names, the queue manager must be running and from version 7.1 onwards be associated with your currently active installation profile so that the correct dispmq fools binary is used. If you use the queue file directory parameter, then the queue manager can be up or down and any use of multiple installations does not matter as no MQ product programs are uh, invoked. Note that the pbuff size, the value for the persistent message buffer, is given as queue manager default. In this case, we cannot tell exactly what the size is, and it may change between different versions of MQ, as the product developers may change defaults based on performance and scalability requirements. Having a non-specific value in the queue file is MQ's way of making it easier to change in future versions. The npbuff, non-persistent message buffer, size is given explicitly. The way this buffer is sized was defined in the earliest versions of MQ before the newer non-specific approach was invented. To change the buffer sizes, the queue manager must be stopped and the directory name given explicitly. It's not always possible to programmatically check the queue manager has been stopped, so you need to do that yourself. If the queue manager is not stopped, then it's possible that, the, that any changes you make to the attributes may not be persisted. Here's an example of changing the buffers. Assuming it runs successfully, you will see 
that an attribute has been changed and you will see the previous value of that attribute. So we can now run the program again without changing any attributes and we will see the updated values. While we can't tell you directly if the changes have been useful, monitoring the I.O. within your OS should show a reduction and the number of messages transferred should show an increase. Thank <music> you.